Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Paul E. Kidd Good Shepherd United Mental Health Mondays. And we have our community partner again, and they are here to present. Dr. Silsby will be presenting on spring cleaning inside and out. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for clicking and signing in and doing all the things and feel free to comment along as well. Um, I thought spring cleaning was uh, a, an appropriate name for this presentation and thinking of um, it's almost going to be daylight savings um, and thinking of the weather getting warmer and just a shift in seasons. And so part of this will look at how we kind of tend to do that maybe in our homes a little bit and apply inside as well. So how can we check in about our body and our mind and our soul throughout um, this next season? Um, I'm coming from uh, the Institute on Violence, Abuse and Trauma. I am the clinical director of our professional services department where we work with people um, in therapy and also uh, when involved in the court, um, sometimes with uh, family or other civil cases, sometimes criminal court. And so I'm the also supervisor and uh, some of these might be um, hosted by our pre-licensed clinicians as well. So definitely come back and keep tuning in on the first Monday every month. So to roll into this, here is our season of check-in. So not so much season, um, maybe people think of personal growth and development and reviewing and goal setting at the end of the calendar year. And I actually think the spring might be an even better time to have a little bit of a gut check because it really is more than just seeing the next year and setting out some goals and intentions or a um, annual uh, initiative, uh, if you will. But then having lived the life a couple of months into the new year and just seeing, you know, where, where am I? What's around me? How's my space? How can I check in with what is happening? And is there, are there ways that I can make adjustments and course correct? Are there things that are actually going pretty well? And can I take inventory and be gr grateful for those particular things? So first up, maybe organize your stuff. So starting from the outside and maybe we'll work inwards. Although as you'll hopefully notice, this really is a um, interconnected situation we have going on here. So think of where are your things? Where do you keep your physical stuff? Um, when was the last time that you cleaned it out? So is that your room, your home, your bathroom, your junk drawer? Um, do you have a purse or a backpack? Uh, do you keep things in your vehicle? Maybe the trunk is like a treasure trove of fascinating objects that have once been really convenient and maybe are not so much. Um, is it a reminder of things that you meant to do um, and have uh, you're still in the middle of that process? Think about um, what can you do with objects that you no longer need? Are they things that can just be discarded or maybe it's something that you can either donate or gift to someone? Um, I think one thing to keep in mind for gifting is to be sure that the person that you're gifting it to is really able to and would use the items that you are imparting upon them because you don't then want to burden the other person with then needing to do something with the stuff that you are passing on to them. Um, many things can also be repurposed. So I think like... Um, you know, giving something a fresh coat of paint or re reusing, repurposing a, a vase or a tray or a box of some kind. Um, there's so many different kinds of uses that are beyond my own imagination. That'd probably be a different YouTube, <laughs> um, at least person. Um, and then also thinking about physically simplifying the space around you. Our brain takes in a lot of information from the world around us and it's processing. And so if we're constantly processing things in our environment, looking at clutter or looking at um, items that were part of a bigger project, 
that can start to weigh on our mind. And so actually um, having things put away, have a space for them, um, having things around maybe that do elicit joy or connection in some way, and really being intentional about what is in and around, uh, around my space, which is a little bit the next one. So thinking of where you spend your time. So in your bed or in your bedroom, what does that, what kinds of feelings does that engender? Are there certain things that you can do to make it a little bit more comfortable or peaceful or relaxing? Again, that same concept of stimulation, your brain is going to want to be taking in information um, or it just does take in that information and then needs to sort through it. So the fewer stimuli you can have when you're going to bed, you're going to actually end up getting a deeper and a more um, restful night's sleep. You can also extend that to think about around your home, both inside your home, maybe outside if you have an outdoor space or a walkway, maybe if you're fortunate enough to have a yard. Um, I know living in San Diego, that is not always the case. And also your neighborhood, which in my mind, maybe urban living is like your neighborhood is your outside space. Like that, that is my yard. I think of that in my like apartment complex. And then also even beyond that about where are you also spending your time and are those uh, replenishing your mind and your heart and your soul? Are there places that you really enjoy going and maybe don't go often enough? This can kind of be a little check-in. It's not so much about organizing what is around you because you don't necessarily have that much control. I suppose unless you get into city planning or join your city council hearings, that sort of thing. Um, But really kind of taking inventory of are those places that you do get to go and visit and um, feel reinvigorated. Next, think of your schedule. So what kinds of things do you have going on in your day to day or in your week or your month or your year maybe? Maybe take a little check-in 15 minutes a day to be really intentional about what you're trying to accomplish in the day. What things do you have to do? Are you inserting a couple of things that you want to do just for the, the, the goodness of it, the joy of it? Consider your values. Consider your family or your relationships. Are the things that are in your schedule reflecting your values and the commitments that you've made in your life as well. There is also one thing to point out here of tracking. So if uh, there is some science that supports when a person writes down, like track certain behaviors, if it's related to eating, if it's related to mood, if it's related to like a health um, illness, condition, symptoms, Um, If it's related to um, exercise, work and productivity, there's a whole bunch of different areas that if you are tracking and writing down what you're doing, you're more likely to achieve the thing that you set out to do. So people will have greater progress just by tracking. This isn't even asking people to put progress or growth, like attaching to it or trying to make a change. It's simply the the writing down, the reflecting what, what is happening. And then I also like, in addition to um, scheduling each day, there is also a place and a time to really be able to dream big and think about what might your life worth living look like? What kinds of things and people and places will be a part of that? And long-term thinking about retirement, including maybe especially for the young people that might be listening, But really, this is also at every age and stage across the lifespan. And even if you're in retirement, you can still be planning for more things that um, that you're looking forward to um, reflecting upon and how you're organizing that um, space and time as well. So this next one, I'm just going to walk through. So wherever you are, uncross your arms, uncross your legs. Feel free, you can sit upright, or if you're in a chair with a back, you can rest into that. 
If you feel your eyes getting heavy and you'd like to close them, you can. If you leave them open, just relax them onto a neutral surface and just settle into your breath and feel the weight of your body or your feet, your hands and shoulders. And notice your breath coming into your body and exhaling and leaving your body. Maybe you feel your breath in your nose or maybe in the back of your throat. And then as you're settling in, bring your attention to the very top of your head. See if you can notice the hair on the top of your head or the skin. And bring that attention down through your face and your cheeks and your jaw, your ears and your neck. And just bringing that attention and focal point to those areas of your body. And notice, is there tension? Is there calm? Is there pain? Maybe there is a sense of relaxation. And continue bringing your attention down onto your collarbone and your chest, your shoulders and your upper back your upper arms down through your elbows and out the ends of your arms onto your hands and your fingers. Again, noticing if there's any tension, or maybe relaxation. And bringing your focus onto your belly and your back, your bottom and your hips, down through your legs, your knees and your calves, bringing that attention on whether there's pain or sensation, relaxation down into your ankles, the bottoms of your feet and your toes. And allowing your body and your breath to be exactly as it is in this moment. And then slowly bringing some movement back in, you rolling your neck, your shoulders, your fingers and toes. And if you've closed your eyes, open them again and bring your attention back to, well, maybe you've been listening to my voice, but back to this presentation. And this is an exercise that can help you bring your awareness into both your present moment and to your physical body and maybe also your mind. We do know that how we take care of our body we first need to know what is it that we are feeling. The same is true about our emotions and our physiological and our psychological well-being. Uh, connects first with being aware of what that is, what it is that's going on. So having an opportunity to check in really is the start of self-care as well in itself. And that can show you what is going on. Oh, maybe I didn't notice that I had that much tension there. Or um, maybe that you did find it helpful to relax. And now perhaps inserting that into um, part of your day um, to start work or wake up, maybe end your day, maybe take a break during the day before you go to bed. All kinds of different ways and opportunities and times that life might open the door to having a, a relaxation period there. So supporting our body can not only help just physical conditions, 
This can also reduce our vulnerability to having emotional outbursts or um, thinking mindlessly maybe on things that aren't with our values and um, allow us to first focus on what are the physical things that my body needs to support the rest of the systems um, at play. So definitely getting, um, making sure you're getting enough food, getting some movement in, um, sleep is really associated with a lot of health outcomes, physical and emotional, and also taking care of physical ailments. If that is a doctor or homeopath, a physical therapist, any kind of practice that helps your body stay in its best condition and be supported. Another area of check here is our mind. So as we've been talking, there very much is a connection between our body and our mind and our soul. And so um, one strategy might be to also not only declutter our space, um, thinking about how our physical self is doing, we might also think of uh, paying attention to our thoughts as well as as much as we're paying attention maybe to our breath or to an activity we're doing, we can bring that same attention to our thoughts that can open the door to calming our thoughts, opening our door to noticing even what those thoughts are and maybe what they're connected to and helps to put you a little more into the driver's seat. One way to declutter some of the thoughts is in part by slowing them down and seeing them one at a time. And this can be helpful by thinking of them on a conveyor belt. Perhaps this is like luggage on a conveyor belt, or maybe um, you prefer a grocery store conveyor belt. And all of your thoughts are little fruits or vegetables on that conveyor belt. Uh, you could also think of clouds in the sky passing through with your thoughts on different clouds. You might also imagine leaves on a river or stream with your thoughts landing on the leaves and passing through. So the idea of this practice is not to change your thoughts and not to stop your mind, simply to notice where it is that it's going and following them as they pass through. Again, more like writing things down activities might be journaling, might be a brain dump, might be um, divine downloads, I heard people call this. There's all kinds of different ways in order to put what is going on in your mind and psychologically, emotionally onto paper. Thinking about um, what has going to happen next, that can be an intentional practice and a focus while also practicing bringing the attention back into the present moment. Or conversely, there is a time and a place to reflect and to have our memories and nostalgia and um, maybe mistakes we've made and then bringing our focus back to the present. So no matter where your mind might wander, remembering that life is happening in the present moment. And our monkey, our mind can be thought of like a monkey where perhaps it needs a little job to do. So maybe you say, monkey, will you help me with this cleaning task? Monkey, will you eat this banana now? Um, monkey, will you focus on this toy over here? And this can be a way where we can playfully engage with maybe a mind that is very busy. Um, and rather than being upset at our brain, doing what brains do, which is generate thought and uh, keep us safe, uh, we can learn to kind of make friends with it in a way. So our emotions are there to do a few things. They have their own function. And as much as they might get a little bad rep thinking that this is, you know, sadness and anger and fear and anxiety and all these different kind of negative emotions. They do also include love and joy and contentment and peace and excitement. And so there's a whole host and our emotions are there to either communicate something to another person might be to validate kind of like self-communication of, oh, this is how I'm relating to the thing that's happening right now. I'm, I'm having an experience. And they can also be there to motivate. So put us, our body into a state of action to rather than just thinking about the vacation, now I'm planning it and now I'm going on it and I am sipping my pina colada on the uh, beach in Cancun. Oh, maybe um, one day. 
And also with our emotions, we can use that same body scan and maybe in their physical body, it can give us cues about what emotions we might be feeling. And maybe as we're doing that, we might be able to pay more attention to our emotions themselves and even notice that we're we're feeling a certain way where maybe we were going, 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 and actually hadn't quite stopped to really think about how it is that I'm feeling on the inside, which again, allows me to then show up even better when I, when I'm able to check in like that. And I think the second to the last here is our community. So um, humans are in fact social creatures and we really do need to be with and around people in order to thrive, to develop, to even grow um, and uh, from a small human up through adulthood and all parts of life. Again, we are not in a bubble. We are more like in a tapestry or a quilt where Yes, we are all unique. We all have our own perceptions of things and our particular um, values or slants and habits. And actually through our experiences, through our um, shared environments and spaces and, and, and how we know one another, this is the stitching. And so it really is important to both have that support while sure taking some alone time taking some self-reflection time that is also going to be helpful to know am i overstimulated was that a lot of effort was i really putting in a lot of help um, and emotional effort in something and now i need to kind of take a break and have some downtime that can also be inversely supportive of being able to show up more to your family, your friends, your community groups, and having some growth, um, thinking that nothing is permanent here, that change is evergreen. And so, you know, tis the season of reorganizing. Maybe there are some folks in your life that haven't been lifting you up or haven't been giving as much as you have been uh, allotting them and supporting them. So perhaps there's relationships that have kind of met their end as sometimes they do. Um, and so practice in letting go and recognizing those shifting tides can also be really healing as well and create space for the people in your life and the communities and activities and connections that you have that really will fill you up. And probably um, Dr. Rogers can talk way more about this than I can, um, but continue to show up and to your life, into your faith, be connected and recognize that, again, it's mind and body and soul. There is really more to that. And it very much like a family, it's more than the sum of its parts. There's more to a person than um getting enough sleep and eating and checking in on emotions. Um, there are a whole other um, avenues of really being able to connect and interconnect in that way, thinking of what are your goals? Um, how do they relate to values that you hold in your life? And am I making commitments that are allowing me to really be existing in a way and walking the path that I really um, feel strongly and is important um, to do so and in line with values. And that is it. So happy spring cleaning and definitely check in with your space and community and your deeper soul and also the stuff around you. And um, if you have any questions at all or want more info, anything like that, my email is there and I'd be happy to hear. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, happy spring cleaning. And I just really loved how you highlighted all the different domains. And that is that was wonderful. So thank you so much. And we look forward to next month for our mental health 